Hello lovely people, the time has come for me to talk through some more books that I bought. It's a haul, guys. Sophie Vlogs! Okay, I'm going to start off with a book that I picked up because all of Booktube has been raving about it for quite a while now, so I'm assuming it's good, and that's The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. I've heard so many good things about this. Everyone's reading it at the moment. I've been really into fantasy recently, and so everyone's just going on about this. And I was like, hey, if I'm having this fantasy moment, maybe I'll just continue to ride the fantasy wave and see what this is about. I did pick it up with a very small knowledge of what actually the plot is. There's like a catastrophe, and then comes like the stillness. I don't really know. It's just like everyone's been going on. So I was like, this is my time. <laughs> Moving on from that is another book which I bought because of Booktube, um, specifically because of Jen Campbell, and that's A Portable Shelter by Kirsty Logan. This is a gorgeous edition of it. It's so beautiful. This is a series of short stories, as the blurb tells me, tales of circuses and stargazing, selkie fishermen and domestic werewolves, child-eating witches and broken-toothed dragons, which sounds like such a Jen Campbell book. Absolutely. I understand why she's been talking about it a lot. I've never read any Kirsty Logan. Um, was it The Grace? The one where the world flooded was on my was on my radar. Never got around to picking it up. When I saw this one, I was like, "Hey, maybe I'll try out some Kirsty Logan. Maybe short stories is my way in." I don't read a huge amount of short stories anymore because I don't I don't always get on with them. But I figured a nice small little compact one like this hopefully will be like the perfect introduction. Following on from that, I bought a tiny little book. This is The Wood by John Stuart Collis. This is actually an excerpt from a larger novel of his. I've been enjoying nature writing on and off. I don't dip into it that frequently, but just every now and then. This is, um, during the Second World War, John Stuart Collis was put to agricultural work, clearing and sitting in Ashwood. He found a meditative, meditative peace and an earnest pleasure. So um, it's sort of like uh, peaceful ponderings while he's doing some like uh, agricultural work during the war and stuff just thought it'd be because it's so small just to like expand my repertoire a bit I don't know following on from that we have a book that I've been wanting to read for ages so I'm now excited to actually own it and get around to it soon that's The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch which is the first book of the Gentleman Bastard sequence my understanding is Loch Lamora steals from the rich doesn't give to the poor, keeps it for his little gang, and then um, the capricious colourful underworld of the ancient city of Camorra is the only home they've ever known, but now a clandestine war is threatening to tear it apart. Caught up in a murderous game, Locke and his friends are suddenly struggling just to stay alive. This sounds like such my cup of tea. It sounds like we're going to have like swashbuckling adventures and like thievery and like battling for your life and all this sort of thing. Uh, it's, I've been wanting to read it for ages, and I think it's set in Venice. That's what this looks like, and I visited Venice. So, that's just an addendum. I'm excited for this one, is what I'm trying to say. So excited, in fact, that because it was also on offer, I also picked up The Republic of Thieves, which is the second book in the Lies of the Loch Namora series, so I really hope I like the first one. I don't normally do this. I don't normally buy the second book before I've read the first book, because I might hate the first book. But I got overexcited, if I'm honest. And here we are. Moving on. Uh, moving on is a book, this was a real impulse buy. A lot of these I'm like, I read this because of this, this was impulsive. Um, the Stately Homo, A Celebration of the Life of Quentin Crisp, edited by Paul Bailey. I'm not super familiar with who Quentin Crisp is, although I have heard of him before, but I was intrigued by this because I read the description. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. The Stately Homo presents a multifaceted portrait of this unique and uniquely amusing character with contributions from friends, admirers, and critics. Essentially, like, um, He's described as, he wore women's clothes on only one occasion and was disappointed because nobody paid him any attention. Dennis Pratt, the boy from a typical suburban background, transformed himself into the bohemian who was Quentin Crisp, a man who looked like a woman but wasn't. This is not one I know a huge amount about. This sounded intriguing to me. I enjoy reading about people who um, challenged gender expectations, who played with, like, gender presentations, stuff like this. That's something that is interesting to me. So I'm hoping this is going to be really interesting and that Quentin Crisp is going to be an interesting figure. I don't actually really know that much about him. It was a bit of an impulse buy. I'll be honest. 
Um, the final two are books that got sent to my work, which I took home. I feel like, I feel like it sounds, because I've just started talking about my job on this channel, it sounds like I've just started there. I've been there for two years, I've just never talked about it before, and now, because they keep bringing books home, I keep chatting about my job. Um, these two are... So the first one that I took home is Amelia Fang and the Half Moon Holiday by Laura Ellen Anderson. I took this home because I follow Laura Ellen Anderson on Twitter and she seems delightful. The sprayed edges are really cute. And also I now have a little niece and I think that when she gets a little bit older, we're gonna need to give it a couple, of, a little bit of time, but I think when she gets a little bit older, this might be a book for her to enjoy. So I'm just gonna keep it until she's old enough to read it and then give it to her. Um, but yes, this looks delightful. There are some really cute little illustrations all throughout it. I'm really excited to dip into this one. And then finally is um, Malamander by Thomas Taylor, which comes out May 2019. And this just sounds really, this is a middle grade novel. It sounds really exciting to me. In the basement of the Grand Nautilus Hotel, a mysterious girl crashes into Herbie Lemon's room and cries, help me. In the window of the eerie book dispensary, a mechanical mermonkey sits and waits. And out beyond the pier, something stirs. Could the legend of the Malamander really be true? That sounds really exciting to me. So I'm excited to jump in, dive into some middle grade. I've really been enjoying dipping back into middle grade fiction every now and then. So this is exciting to me. Those are all the books I wanted to talk about. It is a quick little blip today. Um, as for usual, have you read any of these? Do you have any thoughts on them? Do you have any recommendations? The usual shebang. Um, otherwise, I hope you're having a really lovely day. I will see you next week for something different.